Welcome to another edition of the show. We talk Colonel football, and it is the Opportunity Bull from Raising Canes this Saturday at Roy Kidd Stadium. It's a chance at a trophy, ring, sing Cabot on the Hill. A lot of good things if you can get the win, Walt Wells, over the opponent, Western Carolina. Oh, no question. It's a great opportunity, you know, not a play on words here, but it's a great opportunity for our football team and, and for the city of Richmond and, and to bring a, uh, you know, a bowl type atmosphere and a bowl championship uh, to our players to give them something to play for this year is something that we started, uh, our administration started uh, way back when we were scheduling. They, uh, they told us there was a vision. They told us there was a, a plan to give us something to play for, and they have, and we're looking forward to it. Um, you know, as I, I explained to the team, it's, uh, you know, a bowl championship is a championship, so let's go out and win this thing, and, and let's concentrate on what we have to do, which is win the game, you know, and let everybody else enjoy everything that's going to be involved in it. It's going to be senior day for us also, so we're going to say goodbye to some guys, and there'll be some juniors and some other people that are going through senior day um, was still decisions to be made. So, uh, you know, you'll see some guys out there and, and they'll, they'll, some of them are planning on returning, but with this COVID stuff and everything that's going on, they felt like they wanted to get some of their, their family there to be involved in that. So uh, we're excited about the opportunity. Western Carolina is a really good football team watching them on film. Uh, I know they've done a great job and, and had a tough game against Liberty, but, you know, Liberty is a really good football team too. And, uh, but they showed some really good things in that game. So both teams, EKU and Western Carolina, open against a ranked G5 team and lose. But here's where the, that's where the, the similarities end because EKU is going into game nine. Western Carolina only playing three here in the fall. This is only game two for them. So they have a whole lot more video on EKU, but you have more experience on the field. So who gets the advantage between WCU and EKU? I think like anything, uh, when you go out and you play a game, you can, you almost can, can, I don't want to say throw that away. I mean, there, there's a lot of advantages and disadvantages on both, both ends. So it comes down to who's going to be there and make the plays on Saturday, protect the football, uh, eliminate the negative yardage and win the explosive play battle. I mean, those are the, the generally the rules that goes into winning football game. And, uh, and so we have to do a better job in the negative play battle. We have to do a better job of, of uh, winning the explosive play battle. And uh, like I said, they, they've got, you know, great film on us. They've seen all three of our quarterbacks play. They've seen our defense. They've seen everything that we're doing. And we've only seen one uh, game with their new coordinators. They got two new coordinators. So, uh, you know, but that there's some telltale and we go back and we were preparing for them all through COVID for the first game. So we have all last year broke down and, uh, and the year before that. So we're, we're going through it all and trying to see any similarities there are. Now, Liberty had a lot to do with it, but when you look at their defense, they gave up huge plays. There were six scores in the Liberty game over 40 yards, so they were susceptible to the long ball either on the ground or through the air. Well, no no doubt, and and you're right. Liberty's a good football team and, and got some really good skilled position players, and obviously the quarterback's really good. Uh, and, you know, and those are first game things. I mean, you go back and look at our first game. We gave up a lot, too. And, and we've improved in, in a lot of areas uh, moving forward. So, you know, you make your most improvement from game one to game two a lot of times, and, and that's the old saying in football. So we're expecting a really good football team to come in here that's going to correct a lot of those mistakes, and we're going to have to fight to the finish. When you look at their offense, they have that new offensive coordinator. They lost a four-year starter at quarterback, but they are veteran on the offensive line, top receiver back, top rusher back, and they use two quarterbacks. Looks like their quarterbacks different sizes, so you've got a lot to prepare for with a somewhat veteran offense for Western Carolina. Well, and, and their coordinator was there, uh, my understanding, and you know, he was the offensive line coach and just right. Played. So there's some similarities in what they've done. So there, I would say the terminology probably stayed the same. So it wasn't as quite of a learning curve as it was with a brand new coordinator, maybe. Uh, but, uh, you know, I don't know that, but I'm just guessing um, how that works. And, and so there's tweaks and, and different things that they're doing. But you're right. They've, they've got a solid offensive line that, that comes off the ball and they play with an edge. And, and uh, their running back, I, I really like. I think he's a really good player. And, and they got some edge players that, that are able to run. And I think we'll be able to, you know, are, you know we're going to have to do a great job on them because uh, they're good football players. And so both quarterbacks are different. Um, 
but they they don't change a whole lot. They probably go a little more RPO with the one kid, and with and with number two, they do a little more you know option football with him. Uh, so, but he can he can throw. It's not that he can't. So it's uh, it's going to be a challenge for our defense, and uh, we're going to have to you know improve from last week and tighten up our coverage, and and we're going to have to get to the passer. Okay, well, good luck against uh, the Catamounts of Western Carolina Saturday. Well, we appreciate everything and look forward to it. All right, that's Walt Wells, head coach of the Curtles. That game starts at 3.05 at Roy Kidd Stadium. The Opportunity Bowl brought to you by Raising Canes. We have the radio coverage at 100.7 FM, streamed at ekusports.com and on the TuneIn app. The game also streamed at ESPN3. Coming up, we talk women's basketball with one of the freshmen, now a Curtle at EKU. At EKU, we believe education is the solution to challenging times. So we're keeping college within your reach. This year, we're freezing tuition, dining, and housing fees, increasing financial aid for incoming students, and you can apply for free. We call it the EKU Advantage. Earn your degree on campus, online, or both. It's your choice. To learn more, visit advantage.eku.edu. The college basketball season is almost upon us, and we talk women's basketball today with a freshman guard out of South Laurel High School, Amara Steele. Your coach, Amara, said all about EKU through and through. That's how she described you. Why EKU? Well, I was recruited by the old staff, and I had a couple visits to college before, to a couple colleges before I came to EKU. And I didn't really like it. Just it never felt like home. It never felt right. Just something was always off. And then I came to EKU and I loved it. Like everything about the school. And your dad graduated from EKU. So you're following in your dad's footsteps. Yeah, my dad graduated and both my grandparents uh, graduated on my, on my dad's side. And then um, my great grandpa actually helped build the, the football stadium. Wow, that's crazy. Uh, that takes me way back. I, I, see, I was still around. I was around back then. You weren't. So now you're here. It's been a crazy year, and, and you faced crazy back in high school. If people don't know, in the girls' Sweet 16, South Laurel goes in. You play the last game of the tournament before it stopped, and you upset as a team, the number one team in the state in Sacred Heart. So what a great victory, and then it ends. Uh, I don't think you'll ever get over that. No, that, that was probably one of the hardest hardest things I'll ever have to get over in life. Um, like, I just keep remembering the time that right after the game, we were in the locker room all screaming, Elite Day, Elite Day, Elite Day. And then we walk out to go to, like, do our conference. And um, they were like, hey, it's suspended. And then, like, everybody was like, what? Like, how? And it was terrible. Tell me about your game. What, what are you known for? What will Colonel fans enjoy about your game? I think mainly scoring. I'm an offensive threat. That's the biggest part of my game. Coach uh, Sam Williams said that she's so excited about the the Kentucky girls on, on her team, and Ken, uh, uh, Kendall Wengler joins you. She can really score the ball, leading scorer in the state. So we have a nice foundation of, of young ladies from the Bluegrass State. Yeah, definitely. I think that um, me Kendall's my roommate, so we we get along really well. And I think me and Kendall will help the team a lot with, on the offense bend. It's been different academically as well. Uh, most of the classes are online. Uh, how have you dealt with transitioning to college and then having to deal with a different way you, you deal with the academic side? I will say academically, I like college better. The online is a lot harder when you have like lectures and like science classes. But overall, I like college a lot better. What, you're a sport management major? Is that where you're, you're headed? Yeah, but I think I'm going to change it to exercise science because I want to be like an athletic trainer. And you're not the only South Laurel uh, former athlete that's now at EKU. Matt Cromer's on, on the men's basketball team as well. And, of course, from your rival in high school, Peyton Broughton from North Laurel's on the men's team as well. So a good representation in the athletics department for Laurel County. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I think um, – Payton and Matt both are really good players, and I think they'll help EKU. What's been the biggest challenge for you in adjusting to college basketball? I know you haven't played any other teams yet, but what have you noticed where it's a difference from high school to college on the court? Um, 
I guess this would be a good difference because I love I love basketball. I love being in the gym. But the amount of time you you put in in the high school level it, uh, compared to the college level is totally different. Like you're constantly doing something with basketball when you're in college, which I mean, I guess you are getting paid for it, but you are constantly like you could be in the gym four hours a day and then you have weights. So that's the biggest transition, but I love it because I love being in the gym. So the first game is scheduled for Wednesday, November uh, 25th against an in-state school in the Knights of Bellarmine. I know you'd be excited for a tip off at three o'clock at Alumni Coliseum on that day. Yeah, I'm very excited to get started. Like, like as a player, when you practice every day, you learn, you just want to play. You just want to like, it, you get an itch where you just want to play basketball. What's your number? What are you, are you wearing the same number as you did in high school? No, I changed it to number five. Any reason why? Is there a, is there a secret behind number five? No, I just, I mean, there's a little bit of a secret, but um, I, I just wanted to be a single number like all my life. Like 22 wasn't, like it was my number in high school, but I didn't really get to pick it because of like all the seniors in right. our school kind of was given to me and I just kept it the rest of the year or the rest of the years I was there. So I just want to be a single number. Okay, it's, I'm glad you're a colonel. I, I know the fans are glad to meet you, and uh, good luck this season for you and the rest of the team. Thank you. All right, that's Amara Steele. She's with the EKU women's basketball team. Again, they tip off against Bellarmine at home, 3 o'clock on November 25th. That's a Wednesday afternoon. When we come back, more on the Opportunity Bowl coming up this Saturday at Roy Kidd Stadium. This Saturday's football game against Western Carolina will be the Opportunity Bowl presented by Raising Canes. And Athletics Director Matt Roan joins us now to talk about it. Matt, it's in honor of Dr. Sheila Presley, who is the Dean of Health Sciences at EKU and involved in the athletics department as part of that uh, before she unfortunately passed away in January. Tell us about what this means and why the Opportunity Bowl. You know, for us, Greg, uh, you know, we talk about it all, all along. Um, uh, we've talked about it all along, excuse me. But, you know, this schedule this, real, this year, this fall, has been really a schedule of opportunities for us. It's a chance to play you know, opponents uh, that we've never played before and travel to places that we've never gone before. And so um, it really was a schedule of opportunities, of new and unique opportunities. And when we moved Western Carolina at their request off of that opening uh, week, uh, which was going to be September 3rd uh, to the end of the year to, to better fit, you know, what their plans were for the fall, you know, it really dawned upon me at that time that, you know, Sheila Presley not only you know, served EKU loyally from 2004 to 2020, uh, but she was a 1989 uh, Western Carolina grad as well. And so immediately, you know, I had the idea of, hey, this needs to be a memorial game. Uh, but our staff, uh, working with, with our administration, uh, they really kind of challenged us. I think we all challenged one another uh, to think a little bit bigger to that, bigger e even than that, to take it one step further, you know, not just to say this is in memory of her, but as a way to honor her, um, is to focus on those things which were important to her. Uh, and EKU as a school of opportunity was something that was very important to her. Uh, our Eastern Scholar House project is something uh, that provides opportunities to, to single parents and their children uh, to, to access education uh, and to be able to fill a, a degree. Um, and so for us, you know, we, we tag that, that Opportunity Bowl uh, name on there, certainly in memory uh, in honor of Dr. Presley, uh, but it's a way for us to, to highlight her, uh, her legacy, her family, um, but also the things which were important to her and which are important to this campus. Uh, and that's, you know, access, affordability, um, you know, social justice, uh, environmental health, several things uh, that we think uh, kind of ties in nicely to that. And it will be treated much like a bowl game that you would play postseason in the sense that there will be a trophy, uh, rings to the winners, et cetera, that type of thing, to try to say thank you to, to those who would have endured a, a unique season. 
Yeah, you know, for us, uh, again, when I when I met with our team, uh, when Coach Wells and I met with our team at the beginning of the year, um, by opting out of the spring and, and playing as many games as we're playing in the fall, uh, which, again, we believe is the right thing for us to do. But but we were foregoing that opportunity to compete for an OVC championship and, and NCAA FCS playoff competition in the spring. Um, but we said we want to create, and I think you've heard me say this a million times, those championship level experiences to let our players know that you're playing for something meaningful, uh, something that you'll always remember. Hopefully, if we win, something that will always be disp- on display uh, in our trophy cases, um, as well as uh, a bowl ring. Uh, and, you know, we'll uh, pay for that for the winner of the team. Uh, and again, we hope paying for it for our own guys, uh, but it's a, a meaningful uh, experience and a takeaway and hopefully a season that they'll never forget. All right. Thanks for the update, Matt. Good to, as always to see you. I appreciate it. Thank you, man. Matt Roan, the athletics director at Eastern Kentucky University. And that does it for another edition of Inside EKU Sports. Like and follow all of these social media pages to keep up with Colonel Athletics. And we'll see you Saturday at Roy Kidd Stadium for the Opportunity Bowl. As always, Go Biggie.